Hello and welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. And today I'm very pleased to be joined by Diane Alexander, our Director of Private Market Resources. And she has a new private market brief out uh, for everyone to take a look at on the intermodal and logistics market. This is a, uh, a market that is growing and burgeoning and it's a part of our large group of resources of private market briefs that we have uh, available right now on the website. And uh, Diana, I mean, tell us a little bit about the brief and, and uh, kind of where the market is and, and, and what you've seen change since the last one came out. Absolutely. So thanks for having me, Jeff. Yeah. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, it's a little interesting this time. I'm being interviewed. Yeah. Normally, I'm doing the interviewing. <laughs> so this is new for me. Uh, but so our next brief that is coming out is the intermodal and logistics market. Mm -hmm. And it's a very exciting market. There's a lot going on, especially because of IIJA and all the funding that is flowing through that. Yeah. Um, and it's also very important because our members do a lot of work in this market. Um, it's a very large market. It's valued at over $51 billion, has mm -hmm. over 2,200 facilities. It's the largest intermodal market in the world. Um, and, and the reason we talk about this is because it captures marine terminals, rail transportation, depots, container mm -hmm. yards, um, commercial residential real estate, uh, freight airport terminals, and uh, industrial real estate. It's kind of like this mini city. Yeah. Um, and our members, they provide so many services, uh, engineering design services here, including uh, land development, Development, transportation, MEP, structural, environmental, water-related, geotechnical services, it really captures them all. So that's why we really want to provide this brief for our members. Yeah, you know, I was flying uh, into Savannah uh, last week and I was on the side of the airplane that just went over that terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just amazing how it is a city right. in itself and the amount of activity that was happening there. I mean, you know, between the, the, the containers being moved, the, the ships kind of lined up, and all the truck traffic that's going on right there. Right. Uh, it's, it's just a never-ending, you know, hive of activity. What are the main changes that you're seeing in the marketplace right now compared to the last time that you looked at the uh, the sector? Right. So in the brief, we outline about five different trends for our members to kind of highlight what's going on in the market. Um, the first one is, are these Western labor uh, uh, disputes that are happening. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is retailers are actually diverting their trade to East Coast and Gulf Coast ports. Yeah. So we're talking Texas and New Jersey and New York are really seeing that spike, including Savannah and Charleston. Mm -hmm. uh, the imports are just really, really going up there. Um, this increase is also providing uh, a benefit also to uh, two specific rails, um, the CSX and Norfolk Southern, um, as well as the manufacturing um, and logistic market. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also had a surge in intermodal volume. Um, and so I have here for the last 25 years, intermodal has been the fastest growing major rail uh, traffic segment in the US. Yeah. Um, so what this means, intermodal is uh, shipping containers and trailers being moved by two or more, meaning multiple modes of transportation, mm -hmm. not just one, whether it be trucks, rail, air, or sea. Yeah. Um, and then there's also, you know, a lot of issues with using trucks lately mm -hmm. and or, or always really. And that's why we see this big push to intermodal uses because you've got challenges uh, like the driver labor shortages, um, inabil inability to stack um, containers on trucks, yeah. highway traffic, bottlenecks. We've all experienced that, especially in DC. Um, and so th that's another reason that this is shifting um, another market that we're seeing um, change is the industrial and distribution. Um, they really lead the commercial real estate market. And, and as residential and other markets start to take hits in this economic downturn, um, we kind of see the manufacturing market really, really mm -hmm. take off. Um, they historically enjoy uh, low vacancy rates, which makes it a worthwhile investment, mm -hmm. um, and especially during a potential recession. Um, and then it, it was all actually noted in an FMI um, construction report that commercial space will be primarily driven by warehouse distribution centers, which will account for more than 50% of annual spending for that market. Wow. So that's where we're gonna see a really large amount of growth and our members can look for potential work in. Um, Another one is inland ports. Again, I talked about mm -hmm. that economic uncertainty. They're also environmentally friendly to do this interchange of trailers inland instead of by waterway only. Um, and so 
moving uh, rail versus truck reduces greenhouse gas emis emissions, excuse me, by up to 75% on average. Yeah. So not only is it cost advantageous, but we're also uh, you know, considering the environment as well. Um, there's also like a new locomotive fleet that's gonna be powered by hydrogen yeah. as their fuel source. So that means we're gonna have a big shift there as we look at this race to net zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also associated infrastructure. There has to be infrastructure to house and store hydrogen. Yes. And that is potential work for our design engineers as well. Uh, and then the last one I'll tell you about is China reopening, which is a very big deal. Uh, they're the second largest economy um, globally, and so everyone assumed China's going to reopen. There's going to just be this huge boom, economic yeah. boom, and it's going to lift us all up. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got hit like we did when they removed their zero COVID policy, and they had waves of COVID that just created turbulent times for them, and they had shutdown after shutdown, um, creating uh, labor shortages and manufacturing order delays. Um, they think that now uh, that they've gotten through, you know, how we mm -hmm. went through Omicron and all these additional variants that they're now finally coming out and their GDP is expected to be at 6.5% uh, by the end of the year, the second half of the year, and then it's actually gonna raise global G GDP, excuse me, by a total of 1%. Yeah. So it, it, we expected more when they first opened, they got hit really bad by COVID because they had that zero tolerance, mm -hmm. and now it's just gonna raise us all up and we will see the effects of that. Yeah, there's a lot, I mean, that that's a lot of good news, of course, for, for the <laughs> economy, but it's also good news for the members. I mean when you talk about the move to hydrogen and, and locomotives being fueled by hydrogen, yes. of course, a large part of not just the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law, but then mm -hmm. also the Inflation Reduction Act, yep. kind of focused in on developing the hydrogen backbone, the infrastructure to go along with that. Right. So I would imagine that's an area of opportunity for firms that they can kind of go in and they can they can look at uh, chances to invest in, in, in the projects that are actually going to create that backbone across right. the country. Um, and it's also the inland port point is, is mm -hmm. I think when everybody thinks ports, they think, okay, well, it's got to be around water. Right. When, in fact, you could have an inland port hundreds of, mile away, hundreds of miles away yeah. from water that's just rail. So it's just moving it from, uh, from, from one mode to another, right, mm -hmm. that, that intermodal work. So out of the entire, I guess, network of ports that we're seeing, I mean, what are the ones mm -hmm. that are growing the, the most as far as, I know they're kind of considered by TEU, and for mm -hmm. those not initiate, initiated, you know, what is... What is that standard of measurement and which ports are doing the most? So it's a, tw a 20 foot equivalent unit, which is basically the size of a shipping container. Yeah. Um, and so what our research is telling us is that the percent change in volume of TEUs from 2021 to 22 was um, the highest in the New Jersey and New York uh, terminal, Houston, and then Charleston. Mm -hmm. uh, Houston was up 18% over the year. That is very significant. Uh, but still, the top five for processing TEUs um, for this quarter, actually, for Q2, um, we had Los Angeles at 5 million, wow. uh, Long Beach just under still at 5, five million, um, and then New Jersey, New York 4.9, Savannah 2.8. They've seen a very big jump recently, and Houston at 1.8. Uh, so a, a lot of activity there. There's just this heightened consumer demand. The volume's increased, so the, the, the ports are getting busier. And again, you'll see that shift over to east and uh, Gulf Coast. Yeah, that's that's amazing. We were out in Long Beach in November and just seeing that port in operation and, and all the all the work that goes into actually sustaining the infrastructure. Of course, they have the uh, Long Beach International Gateway Bridge that was designed by AREP. And, and, and uh, you have, of course, you know, the... I was down in South Carolina not too you know long ago for their Engineering Excellence Awards, and the Palmetto Award winner was the uh, Hugh Leatherman Terminal at Charleston, Port of Charleston, yeah, which is uh, a big WSP project, which is you know a massive expansion of that port to kind of dominate the East Coast because uh, you really have you have, you have New York, you got uh, Charleston, you got mm -hmm. Savannah, and then you got Jacksonville, right, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much the, the East Coast ports. And um, it, it's just amazing to see all the activity going along with that. So, you know, from, let me, let me ask a, a little bit of a, a, a more of an impact question, which is kind of, you know, what region, mm -hmm. you know, regionally through the United States, you know, from a, I guess, what, are, what region in the United States is really experiencing growth from that non-residential 
you know, mm -hmm. construction sector that that from that from that market. Right. So when we look at construction put in place numbers and design and construction spending, you know, we're also tracking what's called the non residential building sector, which includes rails, ports, um, industrial and warehouse. And what our research was showing us is that the, the largest was going to be the mid Atlantic, um, which is considered the northeast. Um, and that was ab up about $30 million for 2023. And the growth projected from 2022 to 2023 is up 10.7%. Um, so that's primarily where we'll see that non-building uh, sector growth. And then on the back of the, the brief, we actually looked at total um, CPIP spending for the entire uh, US. and. Unfortunately, a lot is going to be down, uh, yeah. especially in West and, and California and West North Central. There's a lot of a negative. It's actually going to be down from 4.3 to 5.2 percent. Uh, but then the the upside is that we're looking at East North Central, like Ohio is going to be up 2.3 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas is the West South up 0.7, which again, these aren't huge numbers, yeah. but considering where we are, it's still growth. And that's what we wanted to show our members is where the growth is trending to keep an eye out for work. Work. Yeah, I mean a lot of information packed into a small document. I really, it's whenever these come out, it's like a, a it's an executive summary that is just like its own little its own little research report. And uh, it's great that they come out. And and I mean, you know, for for anyone out there who wants to take a look at the reports in general, what are the other markets that you you tend to look at for these? So there's the commercial and residential real estate market, which mm -hmm. that brief just came out this past summer that you can access on the website. Uh, just you could Google ACEC uh, mm -hmm. private markets and you'll find me. Um, the intermodal and logistics, which is this one that we just covered. There's healthcare and science and technology, uh, which will probably be the next brief coming out later this spring. Um, and then the last one is energy and utilities, certainly not least. Um, we actually just traveled to Houston this past November to just specifically talk about energy because everything that's going on uh, with the BIL and the, the money funding mm -hmm. down through that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's an important piece of the puzzle too. It's the in-person events and that's something that we're going to be looking at expanding and, and, and developing over time. And really these events are honestly designed to help our member firms network, connect with potential business opportunities and to try to actually generate work in those market sectors in the regions where we held them. We're, you know, for example, at Houston for the energy market, we went to Arizona for the commercial uh, real estate. And, uh, you know, it, it's a great opportunity to network and, and meet with people. I mean, you know, you're very busy in your department. You have a lot going on between this. You also had the recent um, business uh, development marketing forum, mm -hmm. the, the, the new forum. That yep. was successful. That was. So we're know. actually going next week to Arizona. It's yeah. completely sold out, so I can't sell you any more seats, <laughs> but I'd say sign up yeah. for next year. Uh, but yes, very busy with events. We actually went to Charleston in December 2021 mm -hmm. to focus on intermodal yep. and logistics, and it was a fantastic event. We had um, speakers and members there from the Port of Charleston, the Port of Savannah, and I'm actually looking to bring our economist on in the next couple weeks to talk specifically about this market more too. Yeah, and, and again, this is, is a, visit the private markets page on the website. It's it's under business resources because we have, of course, the, the briefs themselves, but then we have some economic data that comes out on a regular basis, and it's a great wealth of information for executives who want some actionable data on you know really what we expect to happen what what you can actually plan for and, and potentially look for opportunities for investment and to go after work so uh, you know it's it's great to, to have these these updates Diana I know they were really popular whenever we post publish a podcast talking about these and you know we get a lot of response so I appreciate you taking the time today absolutely thanks for having me yeah look forward to the next one coming out so again you know this has been another episode of Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. We'll see you next time.